that we are blessed, amen, people can see it. And we thank God for those blessings. The blessings are not uh, necessarily the way the world sees them. They see them in the material things of the world. Amen, God will bless with that as well. But when you are blessed, you know that God's spirit lives and dwells on the inside. Amen, and it is truly a time of exaltation and praise to our God for truly he alone is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Amen. What I love about God is that God has a way of arresting our thoughts. Amen. So that we can uh, really think on those things that are true and honest and just and pure and loving and of good report. He knows how to arrest those thoughts, to bring them from yesterday, and to bring them back for even focusing on tomorrow when all we have is now. Yeah. So we thank the Lord God that we're focused on the Lord God Almighty, Jesus the Christ, yeah. the truly the one that was and is and the one that's coming again, the one that's able to give life and give it more abundantly. 
Beloved, we thank God for your presence here today. We praise God for our live stream audience. Thank God for you. And thank you for joining us as we continue to lift up and magnify the Lord God. For truly, he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. If you're able to stand, we do ask that you please stand with us as we praise God from whom all blessings flow. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in their course is better than a thousand elsewhere. I have rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the course of our God. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. When the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing his praises. Amen. And let us do so as our hearts are being prepared to sing our hymn of celebration. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thy calling, do not pass me by. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thy calling, do not pass me by. Without any further lining of this morning hymn of celebration, please join in with us as we sing pass me not oh gentle savior
Our prayer this morning will be led by our brother Freddie Robinson. Yes. Our scripture will be read today by brother Jawan Taylor. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. John. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Heal my humble cry. Father, I'm praying day in and day out that you won't pass me by. But at the same time, Father, I'm going to look to you. I'm going to lean and depend on you for everything I need because I know my help coming from you. Yes. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we yes. thank you for this day, another blessed day that you blessed us to see. We call on your name, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my Lord, my God, and my Father. Father, I thank you for this, another blessed day that you blessed me to see. You didn't have to, but you looked down from your throne in glory. You touched me with your hand of love, waking me up to see another day. For that I thank you, I praise you, I glorify, and I magnify your most holy name. Father, we owe you a debt we will never be able to pay you. You've given us everything you, we need. You've given us yourself, your son, and your Holy Spirit. For that we thank you, for that we praise you, Father. Father, we was all headed for eternal damnation. But because of your love for us, you looked beyond our faults and you saw our needs. You knew we was in need of a savior. So you sent your son, Jesus, to teach us by precepts and examples and then to die on the cross to shed his precious blood for our sins so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Father, but you didn't stop there. When you took your son back into your kingdom, not with some power, but all power on heaven and earth in his hand, you sent your Holy Spirit to lead, guide, direct, and order our steps. Your word said that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by you. For that we thank you. For that we praise you, Father. We love you because you first loved us. You've given us everything we need, Father. We owe you a debt we will never be able to pay you. We're just going to keep working, street driving, trying to pay you, Father. Dear Father, we ask that you let your will be done in our life. Not my will, but your will be done. Whatever you want me to do, Father, just tell me. I'll do it. Whatever you want me to say, put it in my heart. I'll say it. Wherever you want me to go, Father, send me, i go. So hear my Father. Use me in your service. Not to be served, but to serve, Father. So just use me, Father, to carry the good news of your gospel, to share your word with the church and the unchurched. Now, Father, we lift up your church. We lift up the saints all over the world that your church will go seeking to save those who are lost, telling the world that the ways of sin is death, but your gift to us is eternal life, Father. Help us to be bold in going out into the world, not to be reactive, but to be proactive. Yes. Go and meet yes. people where they are, yes. letting them know that you love us, that you were willing to sacrifice your only son so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. We lift up St. John and all his members, Father. Undercover us with your word. Cover us with your anointing. Hallelujah. We pray that your church will be bold in its preaching and its teaching, Father. Then give us a discerning spirit so we can recognize Satan for who he is and what he is. We pray for our pastor, we pray for our elder, and we pray for our bishop. We pray for all who teach and preach the good news of your gospel. Then, Father, we ask that you touch the sick. You know who they are. Touch them in a special way. Speak, Father, because there's power in your word. You can touch and mankind can be made whole. You can speak and mankind can be made whole. There's power in your word. There's power in your touch. Doctors, nurses, and medicine cannot heal. They're just the vehicle that you use to bring about healing. For that, we thank you. For that, we praise you. Father, then, Father, we pray for those who lost loved ones. Touch them and let them know that you will never forsake or leave them. We pray, Father, for peace that surpasses all understanding. Not the peace that the absence of disturbance, but the peace that only you can give us. We pray for peace in Ukraine and peace in Russia. We pray for peace in Israel and Gaza and the West Bank. Touch those who lost loved ones over there. Touch those who are injured, Father. Bring them together under the anointing of your Holy Spirit, Father, and give them the peace that only you can give, Father. 
We need you for such a time as this. We know the enemy come to kill, steal, and destroy. So let us put our foot on that enemy head and step on him. Let him know that he has no power and he has no authority. He can only do that which you allow him to do and what we do for him. So Father, let us never to do the devil's will, but to do your will, to be obedient and faithful to you at all times. We thank you. We love you, Father. We just give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Yes, then we thank you for this country, America, yes. the United States. We ask that you touch those who are in leadership positions. Help them to be the kind of leader, Father, that will cause you to rejoice that you made them, Father. Then, Father, bring this country together. We call ourselves the United States, but we're so divisive, so, so much divisive in this country. So you bring us together under the anointing of your Holy Spirit, and we can be the kind of people that you will have us to be. We'll be a nation that other nations will look to us and see you in us. They won't see us, but they'll see you, your son, and your Holy Spirit reflected in the life that we live. For that, we thank you. For that, we pray to you. Then, Father, when we've done all we can do on this earth, we've said all the prayers, we've sung all the songs, we ask that you look down and touch us in a special way and grant us a place in your kingdom. It's in the precious name of your beloved son we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. And the church said together, Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'll be reading from Matthew 22, uh, 1 through 14. And Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest, while the rest were seized, excuse me, while the rest seized his attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, Excuse me. Take your time. Take your time. Okay. While the rest seized his servants and treated them shamefully and killed them, the king was angry and sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. 
Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came and to look at his guests, he saw there was a man who had no wedding garment. And, and he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. All right. Amen. Can I ask that you all please stand? Uh, from all that does below the skies. Jesus, hear what Christ our Savior saith: Thou shalt love the Lord thy neighbor with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And these two commandments hang all the law and their prophets. Amen. The glory of Patrick. Glory be to the Father. Man, beloved, to God be the glory. Amen. Yeah, he's a great God and so worthy of all of our praise and all of our adoration. Yes. Once again, we thank you. We welcome you to our blessed worship experience that the Lord God will continue to bless us, that we too may be a blessing to others. Beloved, we are just excited about all that the Lord God has done and all that God is doing, and it is being done for his glory. I had the blessed opportunity to speak with um, and to encourage someone who has just celebrated 103 years on this earth, wow. Sister Emma Bailey. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. 103. So I sent her greetings and blessings and birthday wishes from the St. John AME family yeah. all the way from Alabama. And of course, she's in New Jersey, so she said, Alabama is the greatest, so praise the Lord. So God is good, beloved, and he is faithful. I was able to obtain her address, and so I'd like to share that a little bit later. I'll send it through email so we can send her a happy birthday wishes. Amen. And our daughter, um, Dr. Eatman, said whenever they're received, they'll definitely be appreciated. So we are so grateful. May we continue to be in prayer uh, for the Price family, uh, we eulogized and, uh, uh, Sister uh, Nettie, and the family was just blessed. St. John, you are a blessed church. You are a blessed family of God, and always there meeting the needs of others, and it honors God, and God will continue to honor us. And on, next, on this coming Saturday, we'll uh, funeralize Brother Robert Oliver, uh, Brother Robert Oliver, and that service will be at 11. So may we continue to keep each other, each other in prayer, praying for the church, praying for the families, that God will continue to be a God of all comfort. Uh, we have a few announcements this morning, so we'll ask those that they will please come so that they can share those announcements at this time.
Morning, St. John. Good morning. Good morning. So I heard there's a little football game coming up in about two weeks. Well, it's going to be on, so that means that a parade's going to happen earlier that day. So on the 28th, once again, there'll be the Magic City Classic Parade. And over the past several years, we've given out about 2,000 hot dogs. That's going to happen again. So we'd like to ask that you come join us to help hand out free hot dogs and freak people out for getting things for nothing. Like, they expect that... Uh, you know, when they get a hot dog from a church, somebody's going to try to talk them into something. But really, it messes with them because we just hand them a hot dog and say thank you, send them on their way. We also are the only church around that has bathrooms and facilities open for any of the kids that are in the parade. So uh, join us on the 28th to give out 2,000 Nathan's hot dogs. We're giving out the steak of hot dogs again. So if you'd like to help, please join us at 6 in the morning. The reason that we start so early is that the roads get closed off for the parade. And if we don't show up then, then we probably will have trouble getting into the building or to the parking lot and have to park a couple blocks off. So like the Decalogue said, we're supposed to love the Lord our God with all our heart and all that we are, but we're also supposed to love our neighbors Amen. ourselves. Amen. And I can tell you right now, I love hot dogs, so <laughs> let's love our neighbors through hot dogs. Right. So we'll see you in a couple weeks at 6 a.m. Thanks. Good morning again, St. John. Good morning. Uh, we come at the time soliciting your help on the Saturday, excuse me, on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving and next month. We're asking for you to help us. Uh, and we're not asking for any money. Uh, if you want to volunteer, fine, but we're asking for warm bodies. We're going to feed the homeless in and around this area. We will be serving ham, turkey, macaroni and cheese, we will feed them good. We don't feed just anything. Last month we did barbecue ribs and chicken, and uh, Sister Beasley over there can tell you about it. Uh, Sister uh, Kendrick, she can tell you about it because they're out there helping us. But uh, we're going to not only serve, we're going to give away coats, jackets, pants, hoodies, uh, socks, caps, Backpack. So we're asking for you to come out on Tuesday and Wednesday before Thanksgiving to help us put all those items together and then on that Wednesday to help us save. Once again, we need warm bodies to help us do what we're going to do. The, the word said, to whom much is given, much is required. Amen. God bless us. He wants us to be a blessing to others. So we're asking you, please, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, come out on the Wednesday and Tuesday before Thanksgiving to help out, help us to be servants, not to be served, but to serve. And I guarantee you, it will fill your heart when you see people look in your face and tell you, thank you, yes. this is the only meal I'll eat today. It will turn your heart. When you go home, you sit down for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and eat whatever you want to. But there's people out there, ladies and gentlemen, they don't have that opportunity. They need us. So let us step up to the plate and meet them at their point of need. Thank you. Amen. Again, St. John, the Lord is blessing us to be a blessing to others. So we're just grateful to be able to serve, knowing that uh, we serve a great and an awesome God. And truly, we cannot beat God's giving. Uh, we, at this time in our worship experience, we'd like to acknowledge visitors. If we have any visitors that are present, amen, if you'd like to be acknowledged, we ask that you please stand at this time. All right, praise the Lord. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, so we thank God, amen, for your presence. At this time, we would like to receive our tithes and offerings. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. What God calls man to give unto us. We know that we cannot beat God's giving no matter how much we try. He's always worthy to be praised. It is not so much in the amount that you give, but in the heart in which you give it. 
For God says he loves a cheerful giver. And we give it unto the Lord, and then the Lord bless us with grace and wisdom to be good stewards of that which he has entrusted into our care. We have different platforms where you can give. You can give through PayPal. You can give through Givelify. Um, you can mail. You can bring. Praise the Lord. And they will be uh, received in the spirit in which they are sent. So at this time, we lift up our tithes, our offerings, and our benevolent gifts unto the Lord. Father in heaven, we just continue to bless you and praise you and just worship you for all that you've done, God, and all that you continue to do. We confess sometimes we do struggle in our finances. But Father, we thank you for being a God of all provisions. Thank you, Father. Lord God, we ask that you'd bless those immeasurably, Lord God, who thought it not robbery to give for the upbuilding of your kingdom. For we give all things unto you, Lord God, that you will be glorified. Thank you, Father, that you bless us as a church to be able to give through benevolence to those who may have needs. We thank you, we honor, and we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, God. It's really true. And beloved, um, we have our tithe a box in the front of the church. So after the worship service, those of you who desire to give and you brought your envelopes, then of course you can give at that time. And presiding elder Dillard, Dwight E. Dillard, Amen. the Birmingham, Florence, Tuscaloosa District. Amen. Our presiding elder for this 2023-2024 conference year. Amen. Would you please stand, Elder Dillard, and just share a word, because God has blessed you with wisdom and insight. If you'd like to come forth, we would definitely receive you now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank John for all that you do that makes our work possible. Amen. Bless you, sir. Amen. Let us give God praise for our presiding elder. Thank you, and we pray that the Lord will just continue to bless you with that wisdom, the insight, uh, to help lead us, amen, to higher heights amen. and deeper depths. Amen. Once again, thank you and welcome.
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Christ, the solid rock we stand. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Thank you. Your church. Hallelujah to you, Father. Lord God, we just continue to exalt and magnify you. Just praising you, Lord God, because you're so worthy to be praised. Our praise to you, Lord God, is based upon who you are. Thank you, Father. For being the God of salvation, the God of glory. Bless you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. There are many questions, God, within our hearts. Lord Jesus. And you're the God of all answers. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah to you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus that covers us, God. Binding whatever powers of darkness that will come against your people. Loosing, God, the power of your spirit. For you're welcome in our hearts and you're welcome in this place. Thank you, Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, O oh God, be acceptable unto you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for still saving. Hallelujah. Some of us will find ourselves in a valley, but we're learning to look up to the hills which come with our help, knowing that our help comes from you, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's in your precious name, Lord God, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hmm. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, wanting the Ephesians to really grow in their knowledge of God and to have an understanding that positionally we've already been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We call it the already but the not yet, but we have to continue to live in this life as we carry forth all that God has placed in us and what God has for us, not just individually but also as a church. Beloved, as I look at uh, different things that transpire that we see in different countries, things that are going on within our own country, things that are going on within our states, things that are going on within our government, things that are going on in our schools, things that are going on in businesses, and also things going on within our church. Not just the church, also in our homes then Paul helps us to understand how we can really uh, magnify the Lord God and be an example uh, to the world. And But he prays for the church, meaning that it's not already present, but it is the will of God. 
in the letter to the church at Ephesus in the third chapter, Paul prays for the strength. Starting at verse 14, he says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, that he may grant to you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Beloved, as we look at this text, just want to use for a subject, empowered by the Spirit. Empowered by the Spirit. Paul says that he's bowing his knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. When Paul is writing to a body of believers, where there were Jews and Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles being very different in their religious belief, in their culture, but God has made one family in Christ Jesus. Beloved, not only he's made that one family, but we are also one family. You and I have different backgrounds. We come from different cities. We come from different states. We come from different family of origins. But the commonality is that we all have Christ Jesus. Amen. Christ within our hearts. We've accepted him as our Savior and our Lord. But Paul is saying to those that are still believers, he says that he's praying, amen, to the Father who, who's given us, amen, here the family in heaven and on earth, that according to the riches of his glory, that he may grant us to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in our inner man. Paul is saying that we want you to be strengthened, strengthened with what? Strengthened with power, amen, through whom? Through the power of God's Spirit. Beloved, we can say that we love each other. We can say that we love God. But love is demonstrating, amen, the love of Christ living and dwelling down on the inside of us. All that God is, amen, he's placed that down on the inside of us. But the empowerment for our to be examples of Jesus the Christ, amen, is given to us through the power of God's spirit. Although Paul is writing to the church, amen, it also applies to us as individuals. Have you ever wondered why we struggle with love? When the word of God says in Romans 5 that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the power of God's spirit living and dwelling down on the inside. I, you have no power to be who Christ has called us to be outside of the power of God through the spirit living and dwelling down on the inside. Paul struggled in Romans the seventh chapter. Paul basically said, I know right from wrong. But I struggle with doing that which I've been called to do. We don't have the willpower to do what God has called us to do. There is no power in our will. But the power comes from God infusing us with his spirit, living and dwelling down on the inside. He says with power in our spirit, in our inner being. The spirit is not for the outer flesh. The Spirit of God is for our inner man to be strengthened, our moral being. Everything God has called us to do has to come from the inside. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For it's not that which goes down that defiles, but that which comes in. So we need this new heart, we need this new spirit that God has given us. He says, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if we are in Christ, we're new creations, Brother Freddie, where all things are passed away and all things have become new. 
We don't like to confess and talk about the things of the past. Paul tells us that. He says we're too ashamed to do that, the things that used to go on. But beloved, we are in a process of growing more and more into the very likeness of Christ. Paul is saying for that to take place, that we're going to have to have the Spirit. Romans said, if we don't have the Spirit of Christ, we're none of His. That's the word. We want to come to church to grow and to learn. We want to come to church to be unified by the power of the Spirit. Who is this unity for? It's for the church so that when we can be the beacon of light that God has called us to be. I talk to people often and they'll say, you know, uh, you know, I used to go to church, but I've been hurt and wounded in the church. I try to help them to understand that's because we're growing. We've not arrived. That's why when woundedness takes place in the church, Paul said, the scripture says, if you have been offended by your brother or your sister, then you go to them and tell them about the offense. And because we have the love of God shed abroad in our hearts, then we know that we can say, would you please forgive me? It was not my intent to offend you. And that shows the world how we can operate even when there's tension all around. But we know that in the church, the enemy is also present. Jesus dealt with spirits in the synagogue. But beloved, we are the body of Christ and the Lord lives and dwells down on the inside. So Paul goes on to say that so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We believe not for a feeling, but we believe, amen, for a transformation to take place on the inside. Beloved, many times we pray for people, and I've told people as well, but we're praying the wrong prayers. Sometimes we're praying that this be fixed and that be fixed. If there's no salvation then I can't live according to the ways of God. First, I must be saved. <clears throat> First, I must learn to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that God sent him into the world. He died on a rugged cross. God raised him from the dead, and confession is made unto salvation. Hallelujah to you, God. So he says that so that we can... That Christ can dwell in our hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, this is the church, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints. Jew or Gentile. All the saints. Black or white. Jew or Gentile. Black or white. Denominational. All of that can fall when we allow Christ, a man, to live and dwell within our hearts. Because the body of Christ is not divided. Christ is not divided. Christ is the body. Amen. And we serve the true and the living God. Beloved, I can love you no matter where you're from. I can love you no matter what part of the town you grew up in. I can love you no matter who's your mother or your father. I can love you no matter whether you have a degree or no education at all. Why? Because the love of God compels me to love. Um, and love covers a multitude of sin. Faith worketh by love. Some of us are believing God for something, but our hearts are hardened. There's bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. And, no. and God can't hear us because our hearts are hindering. The Lord. So Paul is helping us to understand that we can know this love of Christ. And, you know, this past Sunday we talked in uh, Philippians about just knowing Christ. Paul says, I've attained, I've got all of these, all the accolades. Paul says, but I'm putting them aside because it's rubbish. I just want to know Jesus. Lord, have mercy, beloved. When we get to know and he prays in Galatians that Christ be formed in our hearts, uh, when we get to know this Jesus, when we get to know this Son of God that was there in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth, he says, let us make man into our own image. Just to know this Jesus, Lord, have mercy. 
silver and gold have I none. But such as I have that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth arise and walk. There's power in the Lord Jesus the Christ. The spirit of the Lord in our hearts reveals Jesus to us through scripture. He opens the eyes of our understanding. He speaks to us about who we are. He, he speaks to us by this true and the living God. He speaks to us to give us peace, amen, in the midst of turmoil. He gives us a peace that he says that surpasses all understanding. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. Paul is exalting and magnifying the Lord God Almighty. And then he goes on to tell us, to him, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly. Some says exceedingly and abundantly. Then all that we could ask or think, Lord have mercy, infinitely beyond our imagination. Why? Because he's dwelling on the inside of our hearts, not in our minds. And Proverbs says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. People say, but God has given you six senses. I say, yeah, and may the sixth one turn you to God and not to yourself. Come on, somebody. Then all that we could ask in other words, we can't even ask with our minds the greatness that God can do. We cannot even think beyond the power of God. We're the sons and daughters of the true and the living God. We labor because we have needs that appear to go unmet when he says, but I supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Beloved, we just want to know him. We just want this power that God has promised to us through his word and through his spirit so that we can be the church, universal, the local that God has called us to be. Did you not hear the announcements this morning about a man and how we're going to feed and we're going to be there for, for those that may be in the parade doing the magic classic? That's God. Before Thanksgiving, we're going to feed, we're going to clothe, we're going to love, we're going to pray. That's God. Lord, have mercy. Somebody is going to want to know about this Jesus. Somebody is going to want to know how is it that you're giving this to us and we've not done anything to deserve it. But God doesn't give Jesus because we deserve him. God gives Jesus because we need him. Lord, have mercy. We don't merit this grace that allows us to be saved, beloved. Beloved, I love the church. I love our denomination. If we stayed close to the Bible and the discipline, the discipline is rooted and grounded in the Word of God. But we want our own discipline. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it, and with whom we want to do it. Oh, beloved, be careful. <laughs> but the Lord God is the great I am, and he's created us in his image. And he says that the one we serve can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we could ask or think according to the power what power? Where is the power? The scripture says it's through the spirit of God. That we can be empowered. And Paul says also, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. God is empowering us even now to be whatever it is God has called us to be. The only way I can stand before you every Sunday is because God empowers me to do so. The only way I can be a loving husband to my beloved wife is because God empowers me to do so. The only way I can love you, even if you don't love me, is because God has empowered me to do so. 
Beloved, the oath that you may have in your heart toward loved ones in your family. The Lord says, if you repent of that and trust me to empower you to love, pray for those that despitefully use you. I will show you that I'm a God that can do immeasurably above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Have you ever lost a loved one? Have you ever had a loved one to depart and to go on to glory? And your grief is so strong and burdensome and you wonder, how am I going to make it? And you say that from day to day, not realizing you said it on Monday, not realizing you said it on Tuesday, not realizing you said it on Wednesday, not realizing it was the God that when you said it on Monday that allowed you to make it to Tuesday. Not realizing when you said it on Tuesday, glory to God, he's the same God that allowed you to make it on Wednesday. Not realizing those loved ones have been gone for weeks and months and years and you're still here. That's what you call amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me, glory to God. Um, and God is still empowering us, giving us soundness of mind because he's a loving father. Lord, have mercy. That's what you call exceedingly, abundantly. Above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works on the inside. Then Paul says to the church, to him be glory in the church, Jesus. In Christ Jesus, through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Well, when Paul wrote this uh, over 2,000 years ago, he says, for generations, that's us. The word, the doxology of exhorting the Lord God is for us right now. Beloved, we have this power available to us. The Bible tells us, amen, that if your heavenly father, if your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, then how much more will your heavenly father give the spirit to those that ask? When we're saved, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But beloved, as we grow as Christians, we don't want just the indwelling where the indwelling is going to keep and is going to sustain us until Jesus comes. But what about the power to love, the power to live, the power to praise, the power to thank God? That's a feeling of the Spirit of the Lord that I can love, that I can praise, I can worship, and I'm not bound by my circumstances or my trials or tribulation. James says you can count it all joy now. Amen. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Second Corinthians says, and who has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts. That's the inner being. Sometimes the Lord has to do as Ezekiel says, take away your stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. And place my spirit in you, in us, and write the word on the tablets of our hearts. He said, and I will cause you to praise me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And I know, beloved, we've been in church and, you know, I've been there and we've all been in different places. And, you know, when people lift up and magnify the Lord, we look at them. Doesn't take all of that. The Bible says, if they don't praise me, the rock's going to cry out. <laughs> you see, I can't let anybody hinder my praise because you don't know the story behind my praise. You don't know when we say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? You don't know how many people that sit in the church and in the pews that were alcoholics, drug addicts, adulterers, backbiters, 
thieves. That's why the scripture says um, you no longer do those things and because you become new and you become empowered by my spirit that I'm no longer bound by my old way. I've been crucified with Christ. And old things are passed away and all things have become new and they are of God. You don't understand that when I almost lost my right mind that God came in as a mind regulator and now I've got a peace that surpasses all understanding. You don't know what this empowerment may allow you to do. I mean, it can take years off of your life because you're no longer worried. You no longer allow cares to take you down because the Spirit allows you to cast the cares upon God. Lord, have mercy. Yes, the Spirit that we empowered allows you not to even have to address mess. <laughs> Why? Because God is living on the inside. We're not greater than our master. If they persecuted our Lord, then we too are going to be persecuted. If they talked about and lied on our Jesus, who knew no sin, <clears throat> beloved, then don't count it strange when your name get called in somebody's mouth. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes you have to say, apparently they don't have enough to talk about. But God, the Spirit of the Lord is available. Jesus Christ is available. Beloved, we live to know him. We live to be a blessing to others that God is glorified in the church. We want the God's church to be glorified. That when people pass by, they can see the glory of God. When people come through the door, they can feel the very presence and the love of God. When people come burdened and their, their arms are all the way down to their ankles, we want their arms to be lifted up. When our shoulders are hurting because of stress and tension, we want their shoulders to be relaxed. Because of the presence of God. What about us today, St. John? What about us today? God says to us, I'm bidding you to come. Scripture says the fullness of God. Beloved, sometimes as a, we want that ticket to make it into heaven, but live the way we want to live. Be careful. Because we don't know. Did we really accept him? Are we really saved? The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. What fruit is that? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering. Yeah, it, he grows more and more. So that's why Paul says he's praying that Christ will be formed in their hearts, in their inner being. That the glory of God will rest upon them. This empowerment is from the Lord for his people. We are God's people. And he's not a respecter of persons. As we stand all over the church... Our hearts are open to God. Beloved, the invitation, whether you come forth or where you are, is to be open to Jesus. And when we receive Jesus and the Spirit of the Lord, then we become new. You know, I know sometimes a man that when we think of the Spirit, you know, we think of somebody might run and somebody might even say a hallelujah somebody may say a praise the lord but what the spirit is doing he's giving you life he's breathing you know it's like this breath is just living and dwelling down on the inside of us this is god's life god living and dwelling within us so as the doors of the church are open we bid you to come that you may receive the lord jesus into your heart and the spirit of the lord into your soul 
If there be one, we bid you to come as the doors of the church are open. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Yes, God. If there are some things that are troubling you and you just cannot shake them, if you need prayer, we bid you to come. Thank you, Father. As the doors are still open. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah to you, God. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thank you, God. Body right. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. has come forth a man for special prayer so we want to be able to lift her up in prayer in the name of Jesus I'm going to ask her if she'll kneel and we'll be praying in a man and those that are able to stretch forth their hands thank you Father It is a battlefield. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Church, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Truly, truly a good God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Amen. The Daughters of Abraham's Women Ministry, amen, will be having a breast cancer awareness. Well, this is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They'll be meeting this Saturday, the 21st, at 10 o'clock a.m. Healing by Faith, our guest speaker, Sister Sandra Calloway Fields. Again, that's this Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m., Healing by Faith. Amen. Beloved, we give God praise and we give God honor. Amen. As we praise God from whom all blessings flow. we affirm our faith together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, <clears throat> who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And the people of God agreed by saying...